everyone, I'm Kirsten. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I prepare for a new semester digitally. While my classes have moved online, I have taken these steps every single semester since becoming a paperless student. Not only will I talk about the apps and programs and devices that I use, but I will also be telling you exactly how I use them to prepare for a new semester. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing I normally do is head over to the GoodNotes app and clear out all of my notes and assignments and other stuff that I had from the previous semester or year. I don't want to store a bunch of files into GoodNotes because that tends to bog it down and cause a lot of lag issues. So I'm just taking time here to export all of my notes or any other important documents that I feel like I should keep or things I might want to reference later. I am exporting these to my Google Drive like I've done in previous semesters. Depending on the amount of stuff I want to transfer, this can be really tedious, but I honestly find the act of organizing my files and my notes digitally pretty relaxing. Once I have everything imported into Google Drive, I'll create a folder and label it whatever term those notes or documents belong to. So for instance, I am transferring stuff over from a summer class I took, so the folder was named something like Summer 2020. I then go back to GoodNotes and send all of those files and notes and everything to the trash after double checking that they have successfully imported and opened into Google Drive, and then I'll delete them. Next, I'll just create folders for each of my classes in GoodNotes. This is the app I primarily use for taking notes for class, annotating readings, writing, and working on assignments, and honestly just everything. Then I will go onto the website where all of my professors normally release their syllabi and assignments and such. A lot of times I won't have access to these sites until the first day of classes, but some professors will have their syllabi ready along with any other resources. So I like to go through and actually read and download everything they store on these sites and import those into GoodNotes. So if the off chance I cannot access the site or my internet is down or whatever other reason, I have a copy of just about everything that was on their site into the app on my iPad. Another thing I like to do is have backup dates for everything in Google Calendar. This way I also get notifications in case I happen to forget something. So I'll pull up the syllabi or syllabus next to Google Calendar and just go through and put all the assignments or exam deadlines into the calendar. I have a calendar for each of my classes all in a different color. And then I have two other calendars entitled Events and Important, which will normally cover everything else that doesn't fall into a class category. Of course, again, this can be really tedious, especially if I have all of my syllabi at once that day, but by getting everything done before classes even start, I'm setting myself up to always know when things are due and not scrambling halfway through the year to write down dates. What's great about going digital is that I can also easily move around dates within my calendar versus scribbling and taking up space in my paper planners when something inevitably gets moved or canceled, which is something that will likely happen more often this semester. Something else I normally like to do is create a weekly schedule that has all of my classes time blocked. In previous years, I would print this out and carry it with me in my binders or tack it on my bulletin board, but because I've gone paperless and now with all my classes being online, this isn't a crucial step for me anymore. I decided to update an older weekly template I had, and then I took this into Procreate where I have an easier time drawing the time blocked boxes and creating the weekly schedule how I like it. This template is available for free on my website, so if you are a student or just someone who thinks they would benefit from the template in general, you can import into whatever app of your liking, like GoodNotes, or you can print it out and handwrite your schedule as well. It always happens in at least one of my classes where I have an assignment to do before the class actually begins, and so that was the case for one of my classes this semester. I always try to get those started as soon as they are made available to me, so the day before classes begin, I can spend it relaxing and doing things I enjoy instead of worrying already about an assignment I have due. Most of the time, these assignments are generally pretty quick as it's usually just a review, so I just like to get them out of the way. If I struggled or got stumped more than I thought I should have while reviewing the assignment, I'll usually take a little bit of extra time to review or reference notes from previous semesters. Okay, so just to give you an overview of how I planned everything for the semester. Okay, so I like to have everything planned out in several different apps for the school year. So over here on the side, I have made sure to put the Google Calendar widget. 
So anytime I open up my iPad, I can immediately see what lectures or labs I have for the day, as well as any assignments or quizzes that might be due. Okay, so to start, we'll probably open up my files app, and here I just created several folders for my classes. So I just went in and scrolled upwards, and I clicked this plus button to add folders to my iCloud, and this is primarily what I do whenever professors post, for example, Word documents or PowerPoints, where I have to save it first to iCloud and then convert it to a PDF or something that I can open in GoodNotes or other apps that I use. So I just have folders here where I put all of the notes for each of my classes as well as assignments. So for example, if I finish an assignment on my iPad but want to upload using my computer, I can just add it to my iCloud and then access that same iCloud account on my laptop. So that is how I organized my iCloud. Then moving into the GoodNotes app, I have folders for each of my classes and depending on how each class is structured, the inside of the folder will look different. But for all of my classes, I have the syllabus within the folders and for my Chem 420 class, for example, I have folders for each of the chapters that we're covering. And then within each chapter, I have folders for assignments, notes, and practice. And then anything that doesn't necessarily fit into those folders, I have just sitting outside the folders, for example, our textbook readings. So within the assignments folder, I just have assignments that we had completed for chapter one. For notes, I have the lecture slides that the professor provided, as well as notes that I took myself. And then under practice, I just have any practice materials that they provided for that chapter. So that's just an example of how I set up one of the folders. But again, for each class, the setup is slightly different. So for this class, I have it in folders for in-class assignments and reflections. And then I have a biochemistry folder for past notes that I can refer to for this class. So that's how I set up my good notes. Now to show you how I set up my digital planner for the school year, I am using the newest digital student planner and I have things planned out for my classes in this planner as well but here's just an overview of my monthly it's just a standard digital planner with your regular monthly and weekly templates it does link to weeklies but however I'm just using the monthly for now but it also links to your classes so if I click it will take me to the overview of my classes now I'm only in four classes but there are 12 class overview pages so you can use this for your first and second semester or however many terms that you have in your school year. So this is just a class overview page. I put the course, the instructor, the days and times of that class, as well as the location. However, mine are all online, so it doesn't really matter. As well as office hours or contact information, space for their attendance policy, as well as the weights for the class. And I'll talk a little bit more about the weights for the class as well, as well as any required textbook or materials. And then over here I have the assignment tracker where I put all of the assignments due from the syllabus on here and then I just mark off whether they're in progress, complete, submitted, and the score that I received on those. And I did this for every single class. Then moving in to the home tab, I have just an overview of my classes again. So here I put time blocking for all of my classes. Not only did I put time for my classes, but I also put time to study and time to do classwork and required assignments for the class itself, as well as plan a few business blocks as well. And then over here, I just have my classes here, and if you click any of these books, it will bring you to the over overview page again. But because this planner is so massive and there are so many templates in it, I did use the outline and bookmarking feature that comes with GoodNotes 5. So as you can see, I bookmarked my most viewed pages, so I have the semester overview. I also bookmarked my August monthly page. I also bookmarked a habit tracker, and then I bookmarked a weekly class routine, which I haven't really visited as much, but this is where I can kind of plan out my routine. So every Monday before class, I should do this, or every Monday after class, during class, or one, like, one week later, I should do this for each of the days of the week. I haven't really used that that much. Then I have an office hours schedule where I can plug in their office hours so I know when I can meet them if I need to. 
Then I have a productivity tracker, which I used for one day, but haven't really used much since, but this is using the productivity level board bullet journal method that I tried to implement here, but realized that it does take up quite a bit of time just to fill out itself, so I haven't really revisited that just yet. Then I also have saved pages for the Curve of Forgetting document. I have since moved this on Google Spreadsheets, however, just because I didn't realize how many subtopics we would cover in a single day in some of my classes, so I just put that all in a Google Spreadsheet. However, if you don't cover as many topics in your class, this template will be great for you. You just put in the course, but I have each page for each course. And then you put the topic that you learned, the date that you learned it, and then you fill in the dates accordingly based on the title. So if I learned the basic definitions of polymers on the 10th of August, one hour later would be the 10th of August, one day later would be the 11th of August, and one week later would be the 17th of August, and I would just do that and mark off to make sure that I did review that that day. So this is supposed to help you remember things and convert things more from short term to long term memory. So I've been trying to do that, but I moved all of this again on Google Spreadsheets just because I didn't realize we would cover so many subtopics for each of my classes. So that's how I have my planner set up for the new school year. This is everything that I've been using so far in GoodNotes. Another thing that I set up for the school year is my Power Planner, and this app will automatically calculate grades for you. A lot of my professors do not put grades in until the very end of the semester, so I will never know what grade I have if it wasn't for this app. So I went in and created a new semester. I do have the paid version of Power Planner, however, you can just create one semester or two semesters, I believe, with the free version and just delete those semesters and remake new ones for the new semester. However, I knew I wanted to have a full overview of my last four years as far as tracking my GPA and stuff, so I put it all in this app and just paid the 99 cents or a dollar for the app. So I have each of my classes set up here and just to click on one for an example, you can put your schedule in here. You can also put the times, office hours, tasks, assignments, events you have due. However, I just use this for the grade tracking. I did used to use this for everything. So this is how I set up my classes. I went in and clicked this edit button here. Then I put in how many credits each class is, as well as the weight categories for each class. And that's information that I got from their syllabus. I also went in and made sure to make any changes, so Power Planner will automatically round grades up, but none of my professors round grades, so I made sure to deselect that as well as averaging grades, so I made sure to turn that off. And you can go in and put different grade scales in, so a lot of my professors will have different grade scales, so some will be 92 and above as an A, or 90 above as an A, or 93 and above as an A, so you can go in and change that as well. So for the weight categories here, I can just go in and add as many categories as I need. So for example, the final exam for this class is 20%, so I went in and put that in there. And so whenever I complete an assignment, I can just click this plus button up here, put in the assignment, put in the grade that I received, as well as select the weight category that it belongs to. And if my professor happens to drop a certain grade, I can just click this button and it will omit that grade from the calculated grade, but it'll still be visible on Power Planner, so I can make sure that I have dropped any necessary grades that should be dropped. So I have only completed assignments so far for one of my classes, so I can show you how that works. So I automatically put in grades that I received on assignment, assignments that I turned in, and then it automatically calculates the grade that I am supposed to receive in the class. So that's how I set up my grades for the new school year. And just to show you an overview of my Google Calendar, again, it might seem counterintuitive to have the same dates in my digital planner as my Google Calendar. However, I like to have two different deadlines in one place. So I like having it in my Google Calendar for now. I created a different color for each of my classes. So for example, my Chem 420 class is green, my 482 class is blue, my 463 class is purple, and my 530 class is red. Any events that don't necessarily fit within my classes, I have in dark blue. And yeah, I just went in and put in all the times and days that my classes meet, and I have that repeating until the end of the semester. 
And then I went in and put in all the assignments that they had on their syllabi. So this is how I set up my Google Calendar. It does look very busy. However, whenever you have just the weekly view or the daily view, it's a lot. it looks a lot more manageable. So this is one way that you can stay on track. This is the time blocking method. You can also put in more personal things to remember. So for example, on this day, I wanted to shower at 7.30 to 8.30 and then do laundry for the next 10 minutes after and just little reminders for myself before a lecture begins. So you can do that for your days as well. So just to show you kind of what the week view would look like. And then we can take a look at the daily view. So this is how I set up my classes for the school year. Again, I do this every semester regardless if my classes are online, however, but I think this method works extremely well if you haven't already done any of these before for online classes specifically. So if you are in online classes, it would probably really be beneficial for you to use time blocking on Google Calendar as well as maybe check out the Student Digital Planner this one, as well as set up folders for each of your classes, whether that be on iCloud or in GoodNotes itself or anywhere else on your iPad. This is how I set up all of my classes for the school year. I hope you all found something that you can take away from this video. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me. Please don't forget to like and comment on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.